Aloha! Welcome to day number 44. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's message from Brother John O'Malley. And uh, now you're back with me. And it's a new month, new hat, new messages. I hope that you are excited to grow in your relationship with the Lord. Go ahead, open your Bibles to the book of Matthew. And uh, as you get there, let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Just thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you that uh, that we get to spend time with family and maybe a limited amount of time with friends. But thank you for the technology that you've given us to be able to spend time together, to spend time in your word. And uh, Lord, I just pray that whoever is out there watching, I just pray their hearts are tender. Their minds are focused on you. Remove the devil and his distractions, and I ask that you speak through me this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I hope that you are praying right there along with me, eyes closed, things like that, lifting it up. This is not, you know, it's not a prayer to me or anything like that. It's us coming together and praying to our Heavenly Father. All right, Matthew chapter number one. We are going to skip. Uh, verses 1 to 17 so I would encourage you to go back and read it you know it talks about uh, basically Jesus Christ's history his lineage uh, right and, and so just like you know my dad is Fred Steed and then I have a grandpa and a great-grandpa and it just kind of goes through that line now, I don't know you know past my grandpa honestly but this goes through all of Jesus's history and uh, it's very important to know that it's just for the sake of time and for the sake of this video we are going to skip those verses but i do encourage you to go back and read them on your own uh, but we're going to actually read verses 18 to 25 today but before we do that i want to ask you a question have you ever been in a situation that you couldn't control now for most of my audience out there you're teenagers or younger and uh, that's really an everyday situation for you because you do need to be obedient to your parents and oftentimes you might in your mind you might disagree with your parents and they want you to do something and you are supposed to obey you are supposed to do it and that is a situation you can't control but maybe you've been in even bigger situation you could couldn't control we give you just a few short quick examples uh, two different times actually are the same kind of thing for me and you probably notice in the thumbnail uh, I am going down a waterfall well one time me and my good friend best friend Chad Pastor Chad as you've seen in the videos and seen pictures of him uh, me him and a couple other guys we went uh, hiking up this waterfall and the way the waterfall went, it wasn't just a straight shot down like this it actually was a slant go uh, the water was going on a slant up the rocks and it was really really high probably about 70 to 85 feet uh going all the way up and it really looked like a really cool water slide that you would see at a water park except this was you know god made this water slide <laughs> and uh now eventually it did drop and then shoot straight down and me and pastor chad Pastor Nate, who you uh, have heard, he was there as well, and a couple other of my friends. We were standing at the top, and Pastor Chad looked at it, and he said, you know, I think you could probably slide down this thing. It looks like a kind of cool water slide. And I said, you know what? You're right. I'm going to try this thing out. And so Pastor Nate actually went all the way down before it turned into a drop, and he looked at it, and he said, yeah, looks good. So my goal was to stop before I shot down the actual waterfall because the actual waterfall drop uh, it did drop into water but we didn't know if there were rocks down there and it was really high so my goal was just to you know I was wearing shoes I'll just spread my legs a little bit put my feet down no problem okay so I sit down I kind of you know start scooting myself a little bit and I swish like that and all of a sudden BAM! I am flying down this waterfall. I am now in a situation that I can't control because I am slamming my feet into the water and onto the rocks and nothing's happening. I fly away from my friends. I fly past 
Pastor Nate, and I am coming very, very close to that drop, but all of a sudden something happens, and I 100% believe that it was God. My body takes a right turn, and I slam into a boulder. Uh, thankfully, I slammed feet first feet first into the boulder, but I was going so fast. When I hit the boulder, I did an automatic sit up and my knees went boom and hit me right in the chest. And then I fell back like that. And so the funny thing was from the perspective of my friends, they all thought that I either broke my legs or I smacked my head on the boulder and that I was unconscious. But I stood up and I waved and said, I'm okay. And so thankfully, uh, God took care of me in that situation. But I was in a situation I couldn't control. I couldn't stop. I couldn't move. I couldn't turn. And I just didn't know what to do. But again, God took over. Now, another story uh, also involves Pastor Chad and my friends and also involves another waterfall. This was a completely different place. And this was not into now the first one i meant to go down it as a water slide this one i was not trying to go down as a water slide uh but it was kind of very similar water was going down rocks but we were trying to hike down it to get to the waterfall where it dropped but uh i had grabbed a branch and i was trying to use it to shimmy down and the branch broke when the branch broke, I slipped and all of a sudden I started shooting down. Pastor Chad was actually ahead of me and he was holding onto a rock. And as I was going down, I reached for him. He reached for me and our hands missed. And we actually talked about that not too long ago. And it was a good thing that our hands missed because if I would have grabbed him, uh, I'm bigger than him, I would have pulled him and he actually would have started shooting down face first. I was going down feet first. So thankfully, I did miss him, but I shot past him, shot down another 50 to 60 feet. Again, a, sit a situation I could not control, I couldn't stop, and I hit another boulder. And uh, from my friend's perspective, it looked like I broke my legs, looked like I knocked myself out, but again, I stood up, I'm okay. <laughs> and so again, very scary situations. The funny thing is, waterfalls are like my favorite thing to do. Uh, but maybe God's trying to tell me I should stay away from it. I don't know. But he is protecting me, so I am thankful for that. And then one more. Uh, this one is probably something that your parents have experienced. If you have your license, either you have experienced this or you will experience this. Uh, you lose control in driving. I remember, and this has happened to me, but this particular situation, Pastor Chad was driving and myself and we had two other friends in the car and uh, he lost control. He, the steering wheel had started going back and forth like this. The car started doing this. We slid off the road, and uh, thankfully there were no other cars on the road, and we, we actually smacked into a tree, uh, the back of the car. We, boom, we hit a tree, and we all kind of looked at each other. We were, nobody got hurt uh, except for Pastor Chad's car. Door handle kind of broke off there a little bit. But again, we were in a situation we could not control, and then again, God protected us and took care of us. So, he said, why do you give us all these three illustrations other than to make us laugh at you, Pastor Adam? Uh, well, we're going to talk about that. Situations that we can't control, maybe it's physical, maybe it's spiritual. Well, let's talk about that in Matthew chapter number one today, all right? So starting in verse number 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother, Mary, was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Verse number 20. But while he thought on these things, I want to stop right there, okay? So let's recap a little bit. This is basically, uh, for a lot of you, this is the story you hear every December. You hear about Jesus Christ's birth, right? And so Mary, Mary is engaged to Joseph. They are to be married. Uh, they are also, from what history tells us, they're also teenagers from, from uh, tradition and customs. They are very young. They're probably in the 14, 15, maybe 16 year old range. And so that's probably even scarier for them 
And now Mary is pregnant. And she goes up to Joseph and says, Joseph, I promise I have never cheated on you, but I'm pregnant. Now, for most of us out there, and should be all of us, hearing about the virgin birth of Mary, uh, that Mary is a virgin and she's going to give birth to Jesus Christ, this is nothing new to us. We hear this every year and we're like, oh, it's such a great miracle. And we smile and we embrace it and we love it. But this has never happened before where, when Joseph was alive, right? Joseph had never heard of or read about or seen a virgin birth. And now he is to believe the love of his life has not cheated and she is going to give birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, he loves her. And if you have to, you have to also remember they were still following Old Testament traditions where if you were uh, accused or had committed adultery, they would stone you to death. They would kill you. And so that's why it says there in verse number 19, he doesn't want to make her a public example. Joseph does love her. He is a just man. We don't get to know Joseph very well in the Bible, but we do know he is a just man and he was chosen to be the earthly, basically stepfather to the son of God. So he's got to be, you know, a really, really, really good guy, a really godly man, a faithful one, very patient one. And, uh, but you know, on the inside, he's torn up and He's in a situation that he can't control. He can't have Mary not be pregnant anymore. Uh, he doesn't know what to do with her. He's trying to think, okay, what do I do? I'm in a situation, I, I, I don't want her to die, but I also, I don't see how I could be with her. There's probably a lot of different thoughts running through his head because it says there in verse 20, while he thought on these things. This is absolutely a situation, both mentally and in his relationship with the Lord, that he cannot control. And so he doesn't, he, he, he's at a loss. He doesn't know what to do. Now, the illustrations that I gave you were more on a, a physical part where I was going down waterfalls and I was in a car, but it's the same kind of thing. We didn't know what to do. We were in situation, I was, especially the waterfall, I was slamming my feet down, I was trying to grab anything that I could, and it just wasn't working. I didn't know what to do. Same thing with Joseph here. He doesn't know what to do, okay? Both, again, very, very different situations, but both have the similar emotions going through it. You're scared, your mind is racing, you're wondering what's gonna happen, but just like God took care of me with the two boulders, just like God protected me, Pastor Chad and our two friends, and, and pr protected us in the car, uh, he's going to take care of Joseph here. Look what happens in verse number 20. But while he thought on these things, okay, again, he's at a loss. What do I do? Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring a, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. And, verse 25, knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, look what happened there. Just a few verses ago, Joseph, emotionally on the inside, mentally, what do I do? God sends the angel of the Lord and says, here's what you do. He took care of Joseph. Again, Joseph was a just man. He was a godly man. Uh, he was a patient man. And he just was in a situation he couldn't control. 
And instead of acting out of emotion, instead of acting out of anger, instead of acting out of fear, he waited and he thought and he just waited. See, that's the thing. A lot of these videos I've been telling you guys, we need to wait. We need to wait on the Lord. This is a situation we can't control. This coronavirus thing, the fact that you guys aren't in school right now, the fact that you can't go to the mall, the fact that you can't spend time with people that you want to, these are all situations you can't control. But we don't need to act out of fear. We don't need to act out of anger. We need to act out of obedience and trust in the Lord. He's going to take care of us. There's no doubt in my mind. Are you growing in your relationship with the Lord today? Are you being patient with God? Are you being obedient to your parents? What are you doing right now? Don't act out of fear. Don't act out of anger. Just wait and trust the Lord. All right? In life, let go and let God Take control. All right, a couple of questions here for you. I hope that message was encouraging to you. Number one, what does Emmanuel mean? All right, what does Emmanuel mean? Number two, who was there in all three stories where I lost control? I was there in uh, three situations where I couldn't control the outcome. Who was there right there with me? And no, hint, I, I don't mean God. Okay, yes, God was there, but I mean an actual person. Who was it? Number three, in Matthew chapter two, uh, you need to read a little bit. What are the three gifts given to Jesus from the wise men? Yes, spelling does count. And number four, we're gonna play a little game of rock, paper, scissors. You have to text me your answer. What do you think I, well, no, actually don't text me what you think that I picked. You have to think what did I pick and then you pick your answer to beat me. I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper and if you beat me, I'm going to give you a bonus 10 dimes. All right? So like if I chose rock and then you chose paper, you get a bonus 10 dimes. But if you don't beat me, I'm just going to give you an extra dime just as if you answer the question. So let's play rock, paper, scissors. All right? Just text me your answer. Have a great day. Aloha.